If you could only have one compressor, which one would it be? Hey everyone, Cole Kepper in here. Today I want to do a comparison between two of the most iconic compressors in history. Now, these are two of my favorite compressors. I've used both of them a thousand times, but I thought this would be fun if you could only choose one, if you only had the budget for one, which one would it be? Today in this video, 1176 versus Distressor, and we're gonna take a listen to these on kick drum, snare drum, acoustic guitar, and vocals, and I want you guys to tell me which one you prefer. I'll give you my thoughts as well along the way. Before we get into it, there are links down below to go check out both of these compressors. Those links go to Sweetwater, and Sweetwater is sponsoring this video. You can get just about anything you ever need from Sweetwater, including either one of these compressors or the plugins associated with these. Yeah, we're gonna check out the plugins versus the hardware as well. But you don't need to just pick up either of these compressors anytime you use any of the links on any of my videos to purchase anything you need. It goes a long ways to help me keep making videos just like this. Jump on any one of my videos anytime you need anything, purchase anything you need, and it helps this channel out, and I really appreciate it. Let's get into these compressors. Okay, let's first take a look at the Distressor. Uh, when you first turn it on, you're gonna notice that it is always on the six to one ratio. Now the controls of the Distressor are actually very similar to to the 1176. You have an input, an attack, a release, and an output. The higher the input, the more compression you get. You're driving the input of the compressor to get more compression. Uh, attack and release are exactly what they sound like. And then the total output volume of the compressor after compression. So in this sense, the controls, these controls, are exactly the same, or as the 1176, I should say. Now, the attack and release are different ranges. So the attack and release on the Distressor are a wider range than the attack and release on the 1176. And we will get more into that in a minute. As far as the rest of the settings, here is the benefits of the Distressor. First of all, you've obviously got your ratios. You just tap the button to go through. Brit is going to be basically just the analog circuitry of the compressor with no compression. That's why it says one-to-one, -one, so you can get all the distortion, all the character of the distressor out of it without any compression if you want. Then you've got two-to-one, three-to-one, four-to-one, six-to-one, 10 to one, which is also, you can simulate like an LA-2A with this. Then you've got 20 to one, and then you've got Nuke, which is basically similar to the all buttons in on the 1176, but not, not exactly the same. Next up, you have the audio circuit. So basically this is a high pass. You're high passing the audio, so you're taking low end out of the audio. Then you've got distortion two plus high pass, distortion three plus high pass and then back off. These are basically gonna be different amounts of overdrive in the sound of the unit. On the detector circuit, now this is changing what the compressor sees, which is gonna change how the compressor reacts. So for instance, we push it once, we've got a high pass. So what that means is it's taking low end out of what the compressor sees and how it reacts. So it will not react to as much low end, uh, but it's not taking low end out of the actual signal, just out of the detector circuit in the compressor. Next, you've got like this mid boost. Basically what this does, this is good for like harsh sounds, nasally voices, harsh sounding guitars, and basically what it's doing is it's pushing up the mid-range and upper mid-range, so if you have a harsh nasally sounding vocal, this will compress those harsher frequencies more, uh, and it just helps smooth things out. Your stereo, oh, and then you've got both if you want, and then your stereo link. Okay, so 1176, pretty similar to the Distressor in the fact that we have an input, an output, an attack, and a release, and different ratios. Uh, same thing as the Distressor, the input decides how much uh, compression you get, it. The higher the input, the harder it drives the compression circuit, the more it compresses. Output is does just what you think it would do. Now on 1176, a lot of people don't know this, but the higher the number, the faster the speed. This is slow attack, and as we turn it up, it's faster attack. It's kind of like a gas pedal on a car. Uh, this is a slow release, and the higher you turn it up, it becomes faster. Hey y'all, Future Colt here. I was editing this video and initially I had went through every single instrument on all the ratios and all of the settings 
and this video was turning out to be well over an hour long. So unfortunately, in order to cut this down and make this work, I'm just going to give you guys the end of where I ended up with the, with the different tracks so you can hear my preferred settings and whatnot. Uh, I wish that I could have given you all of it, but nobody's going to watch an hour video on a comparison between these, so I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for watching. Okay, so basically I'm just going to play around with this and let you guys hear what this sounds like on the different settings. Okay, let's try this 1176 on snare drum. Here we go. Now, if I was mixing this, this is about where I would have it. Try different ratios. Let's try this on some kick drum and see what kind of kick drum sounds we get out of it. Now, like we talked about before, what's cool is with this detector circuit, I'm gonna turn this on the high pass and you'll see the amount of compression that's happening lessen a lot because the compressor is not gonna react as much to the bottom end of that kick drum. Here we go. You hear how much more snappy it is.
Okay, let's try kick drum here. Okay, so here is a bridge section uh, of a new song by Clayton Shea that I'm working on right now, producing, tracking everything. Uh, this is not out yet, it will be soon, but you can check out other songs that Clayton has done. I'll put links to his socials down below, uh, and you can also find other songs that I've worked on for him anywhere you get your music. So, here's this vocal section, here we go. My plans fell through the floorboard Missed my chance to slip out the back door When she sat down on my ride Damn, I guess I'll get him next time And in My plans fell through the floorboard Missed my chance to slip out the back door When she sat down on my ride Damn, I guess I'll get him next time my plans fell through the floorboard Missed my chance to slip out the back door When she sat down on my ride Damn, I guess I'll get him next time Now one of my favorite things about this compressor is how hard you can hit stuff when you've got the right settings dialed in without it sounding crazy over compressed. Now obviously the compression effect is more exaggerated because the vocal is so low, but I just wanna show the breadth of this compressor. So really you can get up to 14, 17 dB gain reduction in this setting before it really starts to fall apart to me on this particular vocal in this particular song. My plans fell through the floorboard Missed my chance to slip out the back door When she sat down on my ride Yeah, that's great. Okay, uh, let's put this high pass in the detector. My plans fell through the floorboard Missed my chance to slip out the back door See those out, like, there's some plosives in that vocal that this high pass really helps smooth out and helps the compressor not grab onto those. My plans fell through the floorboard Missed my chance to slip out the back door When she sat down on Yeah, and then high pass the actual audio Because there's no EQ on this vocal whatsoever This is completely flat Just the microphone through the tube tech My plans fell through the floorboard Missed my chance to slip out the back door When she sat down on my ride Damn, I guess I'll get him next time. All right, so let's get back to the vocal sound. Uh, so here is that same vocal through the 1176. My plans fell through the floorboard. Missed my chance to slip out the back door when she sat down on my ride. Damn, I guess I'll get him next time. You can hear that difference in that big breath that he takes uh, right before the last line. You can really hear the difference at how this doesn't pump, or it pumps totally different than the distressor. My plans fell through the floorboard. Missed my chance to slip out the back door when she sat down on my ride. Damn, I guess I'll get him next time. Okay, so let's try some acoustic guitar here, and let's hear it without first. So that's the acoustic we are working with here. Let's hear it with. Okay, now for me personally, we're gonna want a slower attack and a little bit slower release and a lower ratio for this. Let's go down to three to one. Yeah, that's sounding really good to me.
man, to me, there's an immediate vibe that this has. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the Distressor has character as well. But the 1176 just has a built-in vibe to it. There's like a specific character that these have. So I think it's pretty obvious which one of these is more versatile. Clearly, the Distressor is more versatile. But do you like it better? Which one sounds better to you? If I'm being completely honest, I am really on the fence, especially when it comes to vocals. Now, if you only had one compressor, you, you're probably using it on a vocal. Now, I will say for tracking, I personally would lean towards the distressor for tracking, uh, and then mixing kind of becomes a toss-up. I think I very, very, very slightly prefer the 1176 when mixing vocals, but I would happily mix with either. I think on kick and snare drum, uh, let's talk about one and then the other. I think on the kick drum, I prefer the distressor, mostly because of the high pass in the detector circuit. I, I, I can get a snappier sound out of the kick drum with the distressor than I can the 1176, but on snare drum, it's kind of it's kind of a toss-up to me. So who are we kidding? You can make great music with either one of these. But what about the Distressor plug-in, also known as the Arouser? Let's let's take a look at that. Okay, so just as a bonus, I thought what we would do is play around with the Empirical Labs Arouser. Now, clearly this this plug-in is is supposed to be similar to a Distressor, but they're not calling it a Distressor because there are some very interesting differences between this plugin and the actual hardware unit. Now, the first interesting difference is this attack modification, which is, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm gonna show you what exactly it does. Uh, the next uh, interesting thing is we have variable saturation here, all on its own. Also, we have a variable high pass in the detection circuit. And instead of just the mid push on the hardware, we now have an actual parametric EQ uh, to, to trigger that. So there are some very interesting differences here. So let's just go ahead. Let's, uh, let's start with this on snare drum here. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna turn this attack modification so you can kind of hear what it does. Here we go. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this on the kick drum real quick here. Get rid of this and this. Sounds pretty great. Let's work on this uh, high pass. And you can see uh, in a variable way, you can see the compression become less and less as I roll this up because the low end of that kick drum is triggering it less and less. Now for me, I'd set it somewhere around here. And if I've got this attack modification and some saturation, I'm gonna be using it. And I'd probably go down to a three or a four to one. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at that vocal that we were looking at earlier. My plans fell through the floorboard, missed my chance to sleep out the back door when she sat. Let's try this attack mod on the vocal. 
My plans fell through the floorboard Missed my chance to slip out the back door When she sat down on my right Damn, I guess I'll get him next time That sounds so good, let's try the saturation My plans fell through the floorboard Miss my chance to slip out the back door when she sat down on my ride. Damn, I guess I'll get him next time. Wonderful high pass. My plans fell through the floorboard. Miss my chance to slip out the back door when she sat down on my ride. Damn, I guess I'll get him next time. And then with this parametric, let's uh, let's try pushing in some like three-ish K, something like that. We're gonna go pretty narrow on it. Let's try this. My plans fell through the floorboard. Missed my chance to slip out the back door when she sat down on my ride. Damn, I guess I'll get him next time. So you can hear how much smoother that made it. Now, obviously, it was increasing the amount of compression because I was pushing into it. Uh, so you have to rebalance your amount of compression after setting up the side chain. But you can hear how much smoother that made that. My plans fell through the floorboard. Missed my chance to slip out the back door when she sat down on my ride. And then you can really push into like this like seven-ish K range and, and start getting some sibilance. My plans fell through the floorboard. Missed my chance to slip out the back door when she sat down on my You know, really, really good stuff. This plugin is amazing. And there are there are parts about it that I like more than the actual distressor. Take that for whatever it is. I think if you're looking for the most organic, natural, awesome, if you're if you're trying to live at 99 and a half percent, then the plugin's cool. If you're trying to live at 101 percent quality wise, then the hardware is cool. Uh, but the the plugin does a lot of things the hardware doesn't. Don't forget links down below for everything I go over in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you drop me a comment because I really want to know which one you guys liked better. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.